hey you guys welcome or welcome back to my channel today i'm going to show you guys how i achieved these beautiful super reflective rhinestone french tips these are perfect for birthdays or any special occasion um, these are just a couple of different clips of them i hope you guys enjoy make sure to subscribe like and share okay so here i'm starting off with a fresh set of nails um, completely negative any you know product or residue i'm gonna go in with my stainless steel cuticle pusher as you can see mine is double sided and i'm just gonna lightly go in and push back my cuticles because i need to remove any additional dead skin typically i will just put my nail prep video in the you know below description but i figured you know what let me go ahead and include some of these steps for you guys because I get asked a lot and I'm not sure if you guys see that video but I just wanted to go ahead and include it here for you as well so after pushing back my cuticles I go in with my little buffer that I will have linked below as well and I just lightly buff the surface of all of my nails just to remove any additional oil or just you know any leftover little bits from previous nail sets and then I'm gonna go in with the opposite side of my cuticle pusher this is just a very squared off edge and I'm really going to use that to remove any additional skin that may be still stuck to the nail bed that the cuticle pusher side did not remove before going in with a actual ball drill bit to really clean up those cuticles as well as any additional like skin and dead skin off of the sides of my finger. I know it may look like I'm going in pretty hard, but I'm not. I'm trying to be as soft as possible while removing that skin. So please keep that in mind when you guys are doing this. Please take your time and be careful. In this clip, I'm going in with that ball drill bit that I was talking about. Both my e-file and these separate drill bits were purchased on Amazon, so I will make sure to have those linked below for you guys as well. I'm trying to get a lot better with my description box because I want to make sure that I have everything in there that you guys need and any information that I'm able to provide um, for like any of the supplies that I use in my videos. I want to make sure that everything is down there. So if I forget to mention anything, don't you know forget to like let me know. So please feel free to let me know um, in the comments below so that I can go ahead and update that for anything that I may have missed. And I'm lightly going in here with that ball drill bit, very lightly. I'm actually doing this against the skin and not against the actual nail until I remove all of the, you know, initial dead skin off of the cuticles that I'm looking to do and around my nail. And then I'm going to have like excess skin that I wanna go ahead and clip off. So what I like to do, is pull back my cuticle with like my pointer finger or just an additional finger that I you know that's closest to the next one and I will start clipping off that skin once again take your time with this I have cut myself before I just cut my big toe <laughs> doing this and it was not fun okay it hurt really bad it feels better now but again make sure that you're being patient and just going through and taking your time to do this make sure that all of your um, instruments are clean and sanitized uh, here i'm just going in with a cotton pad and 70 percent isopurpyl alcohol just to clean off any excess dust that was left behind on the nail bed you see how clean they are looking really good <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and go in with some of my favorite soft gel tips this brand it's DD. &D. I also love their gel polish line. It's one of my favorites to use. The opacity of their polishes are amazing and these gel tips are just the same. Here I'm measuring the nails out to my nail bed. That one was pretty good so I'm like okay we'll keep pushing going on to the next. I'm just going to go ahead and go through all of the nails measuring them and ensuring that all of them fit perfectly from sidewall to sidewall. If you see me rocking my finger back and forth, it's just to make sure that everything fits perfectly. If there's any, if like the nail is a little bit too small, I won't put it on because then you risk it popping off. You see this one has a little bit of space on the side, but the size under it is a little bit too small. So I'm gonna go ahead, 
put that nail to the side and my pointer finger and ring finger fit the same size so what I'll do is just get two of the same one and with this one I'm just gonna have to file those sides in a little bit Okay, so here, as I was saying, the pointer finger and ring finger nails were a little bit too big. So I'm just going in and buffing in the edges, really making sure to keep it curved to like the natural nail shape and not wanting to score off that nail too much. Just softly going in with the 120 side so that I have the perfect shape and size for those two nails. Here I'm gonna use my Beatles nail glue to adhere my nail tips. And if you're new to my process, I go in and I paint the base of that nail. These nails are already roughed up at the base, so that's really nice. They're already etched in. And then I scoop whatever is left over on that brush at the very base of that gel nail tip. When applying it, I do it at an angle and I go straight back towards that cuticle, slowly putting the nail down and allowing that glue to flow towards the tip of my natural nail. And then I go in and flash cure it using my gooseneck lamp. Here I'm just applying the rest of the nails. Me showing you guys that process again on my ring finger. And then I'm going to go into my big lamp and cure it for 60 seconds. You do not want under cured glue um, or gel glue or any of that, any type of gel polish on your natural nail beds whatsoever. So I would rather over cure than under cure just to be safe. And I always wear my gloves to protect my skin. Um, I feel like they help a lot, but yeah, just try to protect your skin guys. And then here I'm just going back in with the isopurple alcohol and cleansing off the nail beds to remove any additional dust before going in with my Model Ones base gel polish. You'll see in the next clip, I'm applying a very thin coat of this to all of the nails and then curing that in the lamp for 60 seconds. Here I'm going in with my B071 Beatles gel polish. Love this color, it is absolutely stunning. You can wear it by itself. I also have the pink version of this. These are like some really, really nice nude colors. But I'm going to go in with just one coat of this and cure all of my nails for 60 seconds again. And then I'm going to go in with this aqua pink, which is like a clear pink. And I'm going to apply one coat of that to all of the nails and cure for another 60 seconds before going in with our actual design. Here I just have some of my Creation Detail Gel Polish. You guys see that polish? Oh my god. I need to go pick up some more, like today. These are so gorgeous. I have tons of colors. Let me know if you guys want to see more designs with these kind of polishes. Because honestly, this could just be a design by itself and you could just call it a day. But I'm just going in and applying this in a French tip style. And I'm just going to go ahead and repeat that same process across all of the nails. Honestly, this footage was a bit... <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit out of focus and I was going to dump everything but I was like no you know what I'm gonna keep pushing because I actually finally got a really good shot of me painting on the French tip for the ring finger so I'm really happy about that and here it is for you guys to watch And then again, I'm gonna cure this for 60 seconds once I'm done applying the French tip. Here is the Snow Way D&D &D Gel Polish. Uh, it's very like reflective-y glitters. There's very big chunky pieces and also very small. I wanted this look to have dimension. So instead of just being like my regular silver glitter bits, I wanted it to have some reflective pieces in it as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply a pretty generous layer without making it too clumpy to all of the French tips. 
as you can see I'm kind of moving it around just to get more of the big clumps on there so you'll see me kind of scraping it off of the brush and then kind of going around and fixing it once I've done with that I'm gonna go ahead and cure that in my lamp for 60 seconds as well this is my favorite gel adhesive I'm not sure if you guys are able to find this but the McCart gel or um, yeah McCart gel rhinestone adhesive is also a really great one this one gets really thick and clumpy so I don't necessarily recommend this one but the stones stay in place so it's doing its job and I don't want to order another McCart one until this one runs out but I'm also using some AB stones that I got off Amazon I'll also have these linked as well I'm just using like a number eight in the pack I want to say side stone um, and then I'm using the smallest which I believe is SS 23 and I'm really applying the bigger size and the size in the center and then I'm uh, applying the smaller ones on the outside I find that applying bigger stones in the center of the nail and smaller stones on the outside really creates dimension but yeah I mean it's not really a certain science to doing it but it also helps for the stones not to pop off if you're using smaller stones on the outside and also at the very tip of the nail I always put like a really small stone there um, you guys can see what I'm doing so I won't bore you with me talking all the way through it so I'll just let you guys enjoy this part Okay, you guys, and as you can see here, I'm wrapping up that nail design. I went ahead and cured the stones for 60 seconds. I don't know how, but I lost the footage of me applying my top coat. But it's the same top coat that I always use. Um, and I just avoided the stones while encapsulating the edges with the top coat as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.